my name is Brother Anthony Mohammed. I'm here with Brother Leo Mohammed on uh, Africa Reparations Day. Um, could you explain to our viewers, Brother Leo Mohammed, um, the significance of today? Well, um, it's a very blessed day, and of course, this is the fifth anniversary of the annual reparations march that is taking place here in the Windrush Square. Uh, we'll be moving off shortly, uh, making our way to Parliament Square and the Palace of Westminster, also down in the street where a petition will be handed in to the government. We charge genocide. And, um, you know, this event, this march, is really an idea that we have to galvanize the black community to come together in a unified manner regardless of our faith traditions, our political traditions, our differences, to really come together across all of the different disparate groups and demonstrate that we are in fact one people and also to send a message to the government and the powers that be that we as a people are here and we're not going anywhere because there is a concerted attempt to make us invisible as a people in this country and only visible if we are playing the traditional servant role, a master servant relationship. And we want to send a message to the government that, you know, we have no intention of continuing that role and we have every intention of demanding reparations of repairing ourselves but also holding the government responsible for repairing the damage done to us over 400 years and so essentially that's why we're here and that's what we are trying to you know um, bring about over the last five years in the five years that we've um, the, this march has been uh, taking place um, I'm looking to the next five years and um, my question is, uh, what more can be done um, from our community uh, to put more pressure on the government uh, to at least hear what we have to say in terms of our demands? You know, brother, the, the number one way that we can put pressure on this government or any government is to build our community, is to become a nation. To become a nation within a nation, that is how you apply pressure to a government who refuses to acknowledge that there are a group of people within society who are hurting, a group of people in society who have been victimized and who need relief from that victimization. And so I would encourage our people to understand why it's necessary for us to have a nation that we can call our own, why it's necessary for us to have infrastructure, why it's necessary for us to have schools and industry and land, farmland in particular, to be able to start growing our own food and doing something for ourselves. All of these things are very, very feasible and doable. And unfortunately, our people have been miseducated to the degree where we think these things are difficult or impossible. They really are not. These things are all feasible. These things are all doable. And what it takes is unity. What it takes is us coming together as a people recognizing, like Chinese people, like Asian people, like other people, the things that they take for granted, we have to step up to the plate and start doing these things for ourselves. And if we will do this, brother, within the next five years, we don't want this square to be able to accommodate us. And again, it's not going to be necessarily a march for a march's sake or a march to thinking that we're going to change the heart of stone that sits in a government office. It's not about that. But it's about black people from Liverpool, black people from Huddersfield, black people from London and Birmingham, black people from around the country and in fact from around the world because we have international guests here today. Black people from around the world coming together to show our solidarity, to show our unity and to send a message to the powers that be that you can't pick us off one by one. You touch one, you touch all. The, the, the motto for this year's march is nothing about us without us right. nothing about us without us in other words don't be having no conversations about black people about windrush about this that and the other making policies on us like we are not the authors of our own existence we are not the people who are in uh, uh, running our own affairs 
you want to deal with us, you've got to start dealing with us. Right. And we must create and produce representatives of ourselves so that we can now interface yeah. with government, interface with some of these institutions which are constantly laying burdens on us, expecting from us while we are extracting nothing from them. Right. And so, you know, um, I believe that within the next five years, we want to see genuine infrastructure uh, being created. We need buildings that yes. we can call our own. As I said, we need uh, a piece of land that we yes. can call our own. And in truth, the government is actually obligated to give us this. Right. But if they don't, we're going to go and get it ourselves. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, my last question is, what message uh, can you convey to our young people um, we know that our young people are going through their own struggle um, but what message of hope or positive message can you convey to them in relation to this march and uh, the wider struggle? Brother, in truth it's all about the young. It's all about the youth and unfortunately many of the elders don't appreciate this. We don't understand that if we're not trying to capture the imagination of our young people if we are not trying to really be connected with the youth because right now there's a huge divide between the elders yes. between the elders and the young and we have to close that generation gap as right. Bob Marley said we need to capture the imagination of our young people again we need to be hands-on with our young people and we need to be uh, following the African tradition that says old men for counsel young men for war and we need to give these young people uh, an aim and direction so that they can feel motivated to actually do the positive creative productive things that's going to put them into power in the future because the future belongs to our youth yes. but some of us think that they're going to get to that future via abracadabra or osmosis mm. not going to happen right it will only happen with a concerted effort and a plan and so we are encouraging the young people to not be arrogant in your youth don't think that we haven't got anything to offer you as older people who walk these streets right. I, I i fought hand-to-hand -hand combat with the police in 1981 and 1985 on these streets we won these streets in order that these young people can walk the way they walk today right but we need the young people also to humble themselves and to come and listen to us right and to take guidance and advice from us because we can we can show them some stuff and they can teach us stuff about right. their current reality but we need to come back and work together as a community and I believe that the young people brother they will really uh, uh, excel because they are they're more than genius yes, sir. Uh, they are extraordinary in what they have within them and the Honourable Minister Louis Farrakhan of course has taught us and he's teaching us yes, that sir. they are in fact the best generation we've ever produced yes, sir. and all they need is a little right guidance yes, that's all and so I would encourage the young people to humble yourselves brothers sisters listen to those of us who have been around here a little bit longer than you yes, sir. and we're not trying to dictate to you we're not trying to stop your growth and development we just want you to appreciate that there is a way to do things and there's a way that will really forbid you from entering that promised land so to speak there is a way that you may think is right uh, but there is another way that could even be better if you would only um, listen to those of us who have something to offer you to help you to achieve your ends and to reach your goals and to take this struggle to the next level where it no longer is a struggle yes, but it is in fact victory now this is an event that takes place every year and it's been going now for the fifth year i believe this is absolutely so what have we achieved thus far and what are we hoping to achieve going forward? Uh, we've achieved a tremendous amount in that today you can see Rastas, uh, Pan-Africanists, Nationalists, Socialists, you can see Muslims and Christians, you can see uh, the young and the old coming together. This is a tremendous achievement because whether we appreciate it or not, there are forces which are constantly working to keep us as a people divided. 
to stop us coming together on a day like today, on a Wednesday, a work day, and gathering in our hundreds and thousands in order to send a message to the government that as black people we are united and that we're here to stay. And so I would say that we've achieved a tremendous amount and going forward we're going to achieve a lot more because we are about the business of nation building, we're about the build business of community and infrastructure building, we're about the business of becoming a people who can hold our own against other peoples and that we can demonstrate that like the Chinese, like the Asians, like other people, we are an independent and sovereign people. This is where we are going. And so I would say, my dear sister, that um, tremendous amounts have, have been achieved and more will be achieved as we go forward and deeper into the 21st century. I would encourage them to come out to the meetings. I've got, a, I've got one, of our, one of our flyers here. And, uh, you know, we're looking for uh, 1,000 fearless. Yes, sir. We're looking for 1,000 fearless. As you can see, there's a handsome black man on the back of here. A uniformed black man saying, your nation needs you. Yes, sir. And this is what we're calling on our people to really acknowledge the fact that we need to become soldiers. We yes, need sir. to become highly disciplined right. builders of community and nation. And if we will do this, we will start to redress yes, some sir. of this injustice right. that black people face every day and mostly feel like it's insurmountable. Right. Mostly we feel like, oh man, there's nothing we can do about it. Right. There is a lot we can do about it. But it, first, first we've got to come together. Yes, sir. Come together, recognize one another as family, whether we're Rasta, Muslim, Christian, Hebrew, Pan-Africanist, Nationalist, yes, makes sir. no difference. We are a black family. We are Africans first and foremost. Let us come together and do something for ourselves. Okay. Thank you very much, Brother Leo. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Thank you.